metal frame, metal jam, outward swinging door. We've got a setup down here showing us that we probably have a panic bar on this door. And then we can identify the carriage bolt pattern right here. Two bolts marrying each other on both sides, more than likely a good indicator that we got a drop bar. We started with conventional forceful entry for a couple of reasons. One is so that we can get the halogen set and pry outwards to see if the drop bar is even in place. If it's not, we easily defeat the panic bar in a matter of 30 to 45 seconds. Um, the other reason is so that we can get a pry on the door and feel what we're going up against and if we have additional locks in place. You can see once we felt that it was in place, we're now attacking the drop bar mount and we're focusing on the mount that's closest to the lock side. Uh, this is important so that you're defeating the side closest to where we'll be primed so we get the additional leverage passed on to the hinge side mount. As you can see, it's bouncing up and down while we're striking the bolts. Very rarely do these just quickly be driven off the back side. You need to go back and forth working one bolt and dropping down to the other bolt and not getting focusing focused in on one single bolt. It's rare that they drive right through the door like you see in videos or on props if you've done it that way before. Once they're mounted on an actual mount, it's difficult to drive them all the way off the door. Once we've defeated it, we go back to conventional force entry and break the, the drop bar. Still outward swinging metal door, metal frame. I uh, still have my obvious panic bar set up over here on the left, and then I have a bolt pattern coming across. If we can ignore these bolts, it's from the last evolution. These bolts coming across sometimes will throw people off, making them think that it's panic bars, um, when in fact it's just mounted a little bit above the panic bar, and rarely do they, they mount panic bars with these type of carriage bolts. So it's a combination probably of a drop bar and a panic bar. All right.
we're looking at the inside of the door again, uh, this one with the half inch steel drop bar. We're starting conventionally and you can see the ads being set behind the door. If you notice how much flex and give there is in this frame, um, that's because of the stick frame construction that we're seeing here. You won't see that much flex when you're in brick or concrete type buildings and you'll actually get more damage transferred into the door. So we're moving up high and going back in conventionally above the drop bar now that we felt it when we were prying outwards. We're just going to give it one more run conventionally and see if we can overcome and bend that steel out of the way. Even though this was half inch steel, we still bent it out of plumb uh, probably two to three inches and uh, could have overcome it in a different situation. Once we feel that it's steadily in place, we go to attacking the mount again. We're on the lock side mount again, which is important and we go back and forth between both bolts trying to drive the mount off or loosen it up. Again, you'll see this mount didn't fall fully off, which is pretty common, but it did weaken the gap of the door and give us a lot more room to work. Um, as we're driving these bolts through, there are times that the bouncing of that mount might just pop this bar completely out. It's important anytime we're doing irons work like this that we go back and forth between conventional and driving bolts, which is what we're doing right now. Now we have a very large gap in between the door and the frame and we're able to visualize that drop bar that's in place. We're able to keep one guy prying on the halligan while the other comes in with the axe and defeats the drop bar.